Alright. Bargrass. I love watching movies. In fact, you guys you guys have great movies here. Especially the Alien Invasion movies. Those are my favorite movies. And uh, these are the top ten grossing science fiction... I fiction? <laughs> it's not fiction. Science Alien Invasion movies since 1985. Now, I purposely blanked out the title to see if you can maybe guess what you think the top 10 grossing uh, biggest money-making alien invasion movies there are or that, that have existed since 1985 you can see the top ranking alien invasion movie made 306 million dollars 306 million one hundred sixty nine thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars it opened in 2977 theaters um, it opened, just on opening day, it made $50 million, over $50 million. And it was in 1996, so who knows which movie that might be. And the, the 10th ranked science, er, science inv alien invasion movie was $40,283,321. So let's see what these movies might be. What I did is I made these into a bar graph. So I added this information onto a bar graph. And you can see that you can compare how... Uh, you can compare these different movies with each other. And you can see that the tenth movie was quite did, didn't do nearly as well as the, the highest grossing movie here. Just look at the, the the height of these bars. The bottom one was forty million dollars, and the top one was like was three hundred six million dollars. Quite a big difference from the first to the tenth top grossing movie. All right. So here are the list of all of the top movies. The top. Uh, in the Alien Invasion movie was Independence Day. That was the one that made $306 million. Followed by Men in Black and then War of the Worlds. Signs. Oh, Signs was, uh, yeah, it was my, uh, that was my uncle in that movie, Signs. Monsters vs. Aliens. That one is out right now. So while I was making this tutorial, this movie still, so it was still making money. This was, uh, <clears throat> just released as well as District 9, which is, as it is, as it is today, uh, the ninth, or the eighth top grossing alien invasion movie that's ever been created and again that's out right now too and the day the earth stood still was nine followed by the faculty in 10th place so here's the graph with the movie titles along the bottom so you can see how they compare with each other now there's another uh favorite kind of uh movie which are comic book adaptation movies i like watching those too and I, on the left hand side there you can see the top 10 top grossing comic adaptation movies since 1978, starting with The Dark Knight and going all the way down to 300. There's Spider-Man in there, and Iron Man, and Batman, and Men in Black, as you know, was a comic book first, as well as X-Men movies. Do you think that the comic book adaptation movies were more popular than the Alien Invasion movies? Well, look at this. Look at the difference in, in how much these different movies made. The top ranking, the number one comic adaptation movie was... The Dark Knight, and they made $533,345,358. And the lowest grossing out of the, or the, the 10th highest grossing comic adaptation movie was 300, that made $210,614,939. You can look at the numbers, and it's difficult to kind of visualize how this might compare with our alien invasion movies, which are, of course, my favorite types of movies. So let's look at a graph. First off, that shows the top 10 comic adaptation movies. And you'll notice that along the y-axis I started it at 200 million dollars whereas in the alien invasion movies I started only at 10 million dollars. So that should give you a clue as to how these two types of these genres of movies compare. Also notice how Dark Knight how much larger that difference is between 533 million uh, of the Dark Knight and only 211 million of 300 is a huge difference. Even between the ninth highest grossing movie of Spider Man, there's a huge difference between this 404 million and 533 million. Alien invasion or comic book adaptation. Now that you've seen that information, were you able to interpret those graphs and figure out which ones were the more popular, which one made the most money, which type of movie made the most money? Well, it is the comic book adaptation movies that ended up making the most money. Here's a double bar graph that I made. And you can see how much more the comic book adaptation movies made than the Alien Invasion movies. The comic book adaptation movies made than the Alien Invasion movies by a significant amount. 
right? Comparing the tenth highest to the to the most popular or highest grossing movies, that um, the comic adaptation movies were by far more popular and made far more money than the alien invasion movies. I guess people just like watching comics more. Here's a funny pie graph I made too. The amount of snacks eaten during movies, during movies, and during the pre-movie ads, and I'm eating all my popcorn before the movie even starts. All right, the last type of graph I want to talk about was pictographs. And here is a pictograph which is showing how many cows I abducted in 2009. Now, keep in mind that each one of these cows represents two cows. So in January, it's not one, two, three, four cows. Really, it's two, four, six, eight cows that I abducted. In February, I abducted two, four. Now, half a cow would be equal to what? One cow, right? So it's two, four, five cows. And March was the same as January. April was my birthday, so I abducted a few extra cows. So you had two, four, six, eight, ten. I had eleven cows. May was two, three cows, and June was two, four, six cows. So to pictograph, it's really easy to count and to see visually you know, the differences in different uh, in different months. However, you can see it'd be difficult to put on many more months than you know six or maybe seven months here at a time. So let's look at the, talk about the disadvantages and the advantages of the, each of these types of graphs. The circle graph, see it looks good, right? It does look good and it's easy to compare uh, how each piece of that pie graph, uh, how it compares to the whole. And it shows not only a percentage, but it also shows how many degrees of that circle. And we talked about how, uh, how you can create your own pie graph that way. The disadvantage is it, only, is it only works for about three to seven categories. Like if I had a lot of pieces of pie, it gets very confusing very quickly. Often, the exact data isn't shown there. The total amount that the pie graph represents won't be shown. Uh, the 2,428 sightings, I had to add up myself to figure out what the total was. And you'll see in those pie graphs that it doesn't appear anywhere. All right, line graphs was good for showing trends over time. You can see, well, when you looked at my line graph about how quickly my spaceship accelerates that well in the beginning it goes relatively slow but then after five seconds it accelerates fairly quickly and it's easy to see that on the line graphs also you can see the exact values very specifically you can see well after this many seconds I had gone this far and it was easy to, to quickly analyze what was going on for some people line graphs can be a little bit confusing and you can't have a lot of data on the graph either all right, bar graphs also look really good, and they're really great for making comparisons across different categories. And it also shows trends similar to a line graph as well. You can also see how on a double bar graph, like it can, you can compare two similar types of information at the same time. You can see a lot of information on a bar graph. However, it does require putting the data into categories in order to make that work. Finally, a pictograph is really the same as a bar graph, except it looks more appealing because it's how everybody likes looking at little pictures. It's really easy to read, but it can be difficult to interpret. For example, one cow in my graph represented two cows, right? So, I mean, that one cow could represent four cows, depending on what it says on the graph, right? So you have to do a little bit of mental math in order to make it work. Not only that, but if you have partial icons, like I had half a cow, or maybe somebody would say, well, maybe that's like a third of a cow. Well, no, because if it's two cows, then any portion of a cow should only be one cow. You can't have less than one cow. And it's also best for only, say, two to six or maybe seven categories. Any more categories than that, it's difficult to, to use it. So there you go. Those are the advantages and disadvantages of different types of graphs, as well as you now know a little more information about it, uh, UFO sightings across five different metropolitan cities over the last 20 years in Canada, and I invite you to read that article underneath this tutorial. Thanks for watching!